How are we doing? If you didn't watch my last video, I'm in Wales, yes. <laughs> I'm here for the next couple months. So that's the change of scenery. <laughs> You're like, where is she? What's going on? I don't know how many videos I have to say that for. I think that's enough now. Like two videos is enough to get most of you up to speed <laughs> on where I am. Today, we're doing a video I don't wanna film. I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna film it, but I have to, to hold myself accountable because otherwise some of you guys will be like, why didn't you film that? And we all know the reason. So I just gotta rip the bandaid off and go through this together. <laughs> So you guys will know that every year I make two big year long TBRs that I actually try to stick to. Sometimes I make seasonal ones, but they're not like binding. The ones that are like, I'm actually really trying to achieve this are my X books I need to read in this year TBR. So this year I did my 24 books I need to read in 2024, which I honestly think I freaking slayed at. And then I do this amount of books I need to read before I turn this age. So last April time, I tend to do them around that time. I made 24 books I need to read before I turn 24. And I, I turned 24 on Sunday, which let's just take a moment. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> don't want to turn 24. Like, it's so crazy to me. I'm going to be in my mid twenties. And I know some of you are older than me and you're going to be like, Megan, calm down. But like, I'm no longer gonna be in my early 20s. That's like mid 20s. And you're supposed to have everything figured out by then. I don't have it figured out. When I was like 14, I was like, oh yeah, I'll probably be like, I might have a kid by the time I'm 24. Absolutely not. A absolutely not, touch wood. <laughs> and I'm gonna be as far away from 14 as 14 was from four. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. I feel like I was me by the time I was 14. How is that possible? How has that time passed? Absolutely not. So today we're gonna to be reacting to the 24 books I was supposed to read before I turned 24. Now I want you all to remember, when I reacted to my 23 books I'm supposed to read in 2023 in December, I did so well at that. I just want you guys to remember that. Like, I am not a failure. I can succeed. Doesn't mean I succeed every time. <laughs> and I think I read 15 out of the 23 on that TBR, so I did really well. Do not expect similar results here. I, I don't track this, so I don't know, but I, from what I can remember, I think there's a lot of books on this TBR I have not read. A lot of books on this TBR I have not read. Like, I am I might have read three, I'm not kidding. Like, I think it's that bad, I think it's that dire. So, I don't really wanna film this video. I feel like this whole video is gonna be me going like, haven't read that, haven't read that, who knows? I, it might not be that bad, but I don't know how interesting that'll be for you. So if there's a lot of haven't reads, <laughs> This may be a short video because I don't want to talk about it. Okay, first we have got some horror books. And if you know me, <laughs> you oh know, no. my flavor of horror is campy. I don't know how much horror I've read. too scary. So my first is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This wasn't originally on the TBR that I made. Well, I'm glad you put it on the TBR because I have read it. I have read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix and it was five stars. It was my first five star for Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix is definitely, I would say, like my flavor of horror. We were watching, what were me and Tom watching last night in bed? Oh, we were watching um, Watcher, you know, with Ryan and Shane from BuzzFeed Unsolved days. And they were playing like a video game and I kept like jumping and gasping every time there was a jump scare. And he was like, what is wrong with you? I'm a, I'm a little baby. I'm not turning 24, I'm turning four. So I can't deal with, even when it's like written, if there's like a particularly scary scene written in a horror book, I kind of like read it with one eye closed. <laughs> I like read it really fast to get it over with. Thanks for the opportunity. I love Sorry, it. hang on Mark. Sorry, I'm a bit scared. I need to see. Can you get me out of here? Oh, wow. So Grady Hendrix, where it's like kind of fun. There is like real horror in this. Particularly, I think I remember there being like quite a body horror in My Best Friend's Exorcism. But he 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 does what I want. And I read a few last year from Grady Hendrix. I really enjoyed them all. I think I had a 4.5 and a 5 from him last year. So well done, Megan, for putting this on the TBR. Okay, we're off to a good start. Maybe I need to be more positive about this. Maybe it's all going to go well. Then we have The Drift by CJ Tudor. This is a release that's come out this year. And oh my God, I have read The Drift. I'm sorry everyone, I'm kind of having a moment here. Um, I've read The Drift by CJ Tudor. Again, I enjoyed this, I think this was like a four star. It's interesting because it's kind of like, CJ Tudor's used to be, I'd say more like your traditional thriller. And I feel like this book and also her release coming out next or this year, I guess, are kind of blending like horror, thriller, mystery. Like it's an amalgamation of all the genres. And I do enjoy that. I like when authors put a twist on genres, but um, I have read The Drift. Oh my God. And then one that I feel like a lot of people were reading like last year. <laughs> 
And I'm a bit late to the party on, but I really want to get to is Slew Fit by Brom. I'm sorry. I've only read it. I've already gone and read it. What should be the only books I've read? <laughs> this entire video. Not a joke, just a fact. I have read Sleuthfoot, and I, did I give Sleuthfoot five stars as well? Sleuthfoot was such a vibe. I understand why everyone was really enjoying it, because it just, it has, like, I also love books. Talking about books I love, I also love books that, like, oh, do something different, right? I have not read anything by, like, Sleuthfoot before, right? I picked that book up, and it was a moment. It was doing something new and original. I hate when I pick up a thriller, for example, and I'm like, I've read this 10,000 times. Like, as someone who has read so many books now, and, like, this is only going to get worse. I'm going to get more as time goes on. You have to give me something new that I haven't seen before to get a five star or you have to make me cry. That's basically the two avenues to get a five star from me. Um, so Sleuthfoot was absolutely a moment. What a moment. Oh my God, guys, we've read three for three. Next, I have a few mysteries, mysteries okay. and they happen to be probably the two longest oh, mysteries on my TBR. Okay. I'm putting them on here to try and make Don't me read them. Don't do that. First, we have oh, Night shit. Film by Marisha Pessel. I haven't read Night Film. Why? Okay, here's the thing. I do well on these. It <laughs> my success on these lists does not come down to me actually, did I read these books? Like, I don't hold me accountable. I hold the list making Megan accountable. That is actually what determines the success of these lists. Like, it is when I'm making a list, am I realistic? Am I realistic and do I have my best interests at heart? And if I'm going, oh, I'm putting it on here to make me read it, that's not gonna happen. Put the stuff on these lists that you think you're actually gonna read. Absolutely not. I have not read Night Film. However, I am gonna be reading it, I think, next month. So, listen, almost got there. <laughs> <laughs> so many people told me I'm gonna enjoy night film. So many people have told me that even though it is like 600 pages, it doesn't read like that. It reads very fast. So I think I, I've got it here somewhere because I'm reading it. <laughs> I do have my plate. That's I left at home. <laughs> Ring up Jenny, be like, can you send it to me? So yeah, I haven't read it. Okay. This is the downward spiral beginning. Let me guess, the other one is gonna be the Enigma of Room 622. That's like my other longest mystery that I can think of. And then another mystery that I really want to get around to is The Enigma of Room 622 by Joelle, Joel Dicker. What did I say? What did I say? I haven't read it. I haven't read it. Not for lack of wanting. It's just, I haven't got around to it. I'm going to take a page out of my girl Beyonce's book, My Jaws Business. Oh! I don't really have anything to say about that because that's one I haven't, I don't think I've heard anyone speak about that. <laughs> Then we have- Oh, I don't have much sci-fi left on my TBR. Then we oh. have Sea of Tranquility that is one of the by Emily St. John Mandel. <laughs> that is one of the sci-fi left on my TBR. Oh no, now it's three for three, but not in the three for three. That's like, it's three for six, I guess is the right saying. I haven't read Sea of Tranquility. I know it's really short as well. And everyone loves it. I have read both The Glass Hotel and Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel now. And I feel like uh, Sea of Tranquility is spoken so highly of. I was actually thinking the other day I should have bought it with me because it fits really well a video I'm gonna do while I'm here. Like it would have been the perfect book to slot in. Like it's this video where I know most of what I'm reading, but I need like two more books and I should have bought it with me but I haven't, it's not here. So I'm probably not gonna be reading it in the next two months. And then one that is wrapped up, I've got quite a few on this list that are wrapped up actually. One that is wrapped up is Someone in Time, which is an anthology of time travel romances. Oh no, I haven't read Someone in Time. Oh, I just read the horror and nothing else. Yeah, Someone in Time I got because Theodora Goss has got a short story in it. If you don't know, I love Theodora Goss dearly. She's the author of The Strange Case, The Alchemist Daughter series, The Athena Club series. Those are her only novels. And then she has like a few short story collections, but some of them like have the same short stories in them. And then like her own short story and poetry collections where it's all written by her. And then last year she came, last year or the year before, I can't remember. Um, she was in two different short story collections. She had a short story in, in two of them. And one of them is really expensive here in the UK, so I haven't got my hands on it yet but someone in time I have and I haven't read it I think Shauna Maguire's also got a short story in it and the premise sounds so interesting time travel romances but I haven't read it I do really want to read that next we have fantasies, fantasies and one fantasy okay. I'd really like to get to is Keeper Jesus. of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie N. Holmberg I don't cut the cameras <laughs> cut the cameras dead ass I haven't read Keeper of Enchanted Rooms it's a cozy fantasy I've heard loads of good things about it. however one of the author's books was on the romanticy category for Goodreads, and that makes me a bit nervous about this one. Like, is it romantic? I don't think it is. I think it's more cozy fantasy. And also, that was the only book on the romanticy category I would have ever considered reading. Obviously, I read Fourth Wing, but like, wish I hadn't. 
We also have Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. This is the sequel to Amari and the Night Brothers, which I love. Lord, give me strength. I can't believe I have not continued Amari and the Night Brothers. I can't believe it. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I want to see law and order return to this country. I want to see the death sentence. That is definitely what I want to make progress in. I would just like to know, it's one of those series where like, we don't know how long it's going to be. Is it going to be a trilogy? Is it going to be longer? And I would just like to know. It makes me anxious when I don't know how long a series is going to be. And it's one that I would like, like to finish. Does that make sense? Like Thursday Murder Club, you know, that's probably going to have like 20 books in it. I mean, I don't know if it can because these characters are like old and they're, they, you know, it has to end at some point. <laughs> when it's like a series I would like to finish, it makes me anxious when I don't know how long it's going to be and then I don't make progress in it. That's like zero logic, but alas. <laughs> Then two that are wrapped up that I would like to get to. First, we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Seelin Tan. I feel like I need to get to this soon. Oh, well, I've gotten to it. Actually, I should be happy. I should be celebrating. I have read Daughter of the Moon Goddess, but uh, I didn't like it. And I'm very sad about it because I know everyone loves this, but this just did not work for me. I think I'm starting to see some patterns in some fantasy that is very popular that I don't end up enjoying, right? I think we can start connecting the dots with some of these books. Someone left a comment the other day about some of these and I was like yes you are absolutely right there's just certain I need to get better in tune I think with the fantasy I really enjoy because I just pick up a lot of fantasy <laughs> and uh with mixed results <laughs> and then we have Unraveler by Frances Harding now I love Frances Harding I read A Skin Full of Shadows I haven't read Unraveler I haven't read it I haven't read it this is what I would love to get to because I also love getting to books before I've heard anyone on booktube talk about them so that like I love going into a book when I have no preconceptions really. I mean, I have some preconceptions because I've loved a book by this author before, but I do love going into a book when like, I haven't seen anyone else reading it and I'm like, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna think about it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you can go read reviews on Goodreads, etc. People have read this book. <laughs> I'm not gonna be the first to read it. Oh, I haven't read it. I have not read it. I think it's quite a thick boy and that scares me off a little bit. For these two, we have All the Rage and Some Girls oh. Are by Courtney Summers. These are the two backlist Courtney Summers that I haven't got round to yet. Okay, Courtney Summers, I love you. I have read All the Rage. I have not yet read Some Girls Are. I just love Courtney Summers. I wanna read one of her backlists. This is not a test. I haven't read. Is that it? Is that all the Courtney Summers backlist I have to get to? Or is there more? I feel like maybe there's one more that I'm forgetting. Yeah, all the rage I did enjoy. You know, Courtney Summers books, I'm always like, I don't want to say I enjoy it because they're always like <laughs> very heavy topics, but I will read anything and everything she writes. I would read a shopping list. Courtney Summers, I would read your shopping list if you're out there. <laughs> so, you know, half is not bad considering it's backlist. Like, you know, there's not pressure not pressure but like I do often prioritize newer releases so I'm happy I got to at least one of those then I also put on this list as long as the lemon trees grow which by the way guys uh, I think this is like one of the highest rated books I've ever seen on Goodreads yeah it's still very highly rated but I haven't read it I haven't read it I've tried like this isn't entirely my fault I mean, it is some of my fault because I could have picked it up but <laughs> I've tried a few times to put this on a patreon book club poll and they never they've it's never won so it's their fault patrons it's your fault <laughs> I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses anymore. I think I've been a bit intimidated by how highly rated it is. Some of those books, when there's quite a few books on my TBR, like Know My Name by Chanel Miller, right? Everyone says it's incredible. I'm a little bit like, what if I don't know it? You know? If I'm the only person out here giving this like a three star, there's something wrong with me. You know what I mean? And people are going to take issue with it. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I often get a little bit scared off by super highly rated books. Oh, we've got nonfiction. I was gonna say why she was put a nonfiction category on here, but I, I did that in the 2024 TBR and I have the absolute delusion that yes, I'm going to read all of them. In the Dream House by Cameron Machado. I have not read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read. I didn't even actually hear me talk about that. I just skipped ahead. <laughs> This is on my 2024 TBR. I shouldn't have put it on there. I don't usually let myself put books on TBRs that have been on ones previous, but I forgot this was even on this list. I read Her Body and Other Parties after making this list. So I read A Common Room Machado, but alas, not the right one. <laughs> Then we have two book of the month books that I haven't gotten around to yet that I really want to. We have Bittersweet, How Sorrow and Longing Makes Us Whole by Susan Cain and Tell Me Everything, The Story of a Private Investigation by Erica Krauss. <sighs> I haven't read either of those. Oh dear God, it's gotten really bad. 12, haven't read five, Jesus Christ. I, I, I kind of hadn't realized how bad it got and I just looked down and just really took in those numbers. And... Ah, I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. Whoa. <laughs> 
I have not read Bittersweet or Tell Me Everything. Uh, you know, they're books I look on my shelf and I'm like, wow, I should read that. I want to read more nonfiction. I want to learn these things. Do I read them? No. How long have I owned those books? Quite a long time now. Quite a long time. Quite a long time. I really think I could, you know, find those books super interesting. She hasn't read them. <laughs> then we have Reach for the Stars by Michael Craig. This is like, it looks like a, a hefty boy. I haven't read it. It's right here. It's sitting right here next to me. Can I get it out? I think I'm intimidated by its size. Like, it, you don't understand there's real weight to this book. How many pages is it? It's like 500 pages, but the font is massive. This book, if you don't know, is all about pop. Particularly Britpop from 1996 to 2006. Like think Spice Girls, Girls Aloud, Five, Boyzone. It's basically interviews with a lot of people who are either in those bands or the people behind music. Steps, there's, there's a lot of, you know, really well-known um, sugar babes. <laughs> There's a lot of really well-known artists that have been interviewed in this and I haven't read it yet and I really really want to. I think this would be so fascinating. I'm a little bit intimidated by the fact that it's literally just interviews, like it's just paragraphs that he's kind of linked together what people are saying into a topic, but I think I'm gonna love it and I haven't read it yet. I'm just scared off by its size. It's really got a heft to it, but like that is something that it like is a bit of a niche topic that I would really love. And then my final one is Agatha Christie, A Very Elusive Woman by Lucy Worsley. Ah, I haven't read the Agatha Christie nonfiction by Lucy Worsley. I haven't read it and I really want to. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean to me? No, no. I've got multiple Agatha Christie nonfictions on my TBR that I haven't read yet that I really want to. I read part of this when I was doing my research for the Agatha Christie disappearance video, which is still one of the most underrated videos on my channel. I loved making that video. I had so much fun. I really want to make more videos like that this year. If anyone knows of any like bookish mysteries, like, you know, Agatha Christie disappearance, it's the perfect thing. Like any kind of historical British mysteries. I've got a few ideas that would be interesting to talk about, but if anyone knows of any, cause like when I search bookish mysteries or mysteries related to book authors it all comes up with mystery books but i want like stuff to happen in real life to talk about if anyone knows of any please let a girl know but um i haven't read it and like i wanted to put this on my 2024 tbr but then i remembered oh i think that was on the previous one so you're not allowed <laughs> We have The Once and Future Sex by, I can't, I didn't write the authors down for any of these, Eleanor someone, you'll see it here. I still, I don't even own this guys. <laughs> it's really expensive. It's like 20 pounds. I very rarely spend 20 pounds on a book. I haven't read it, don't even own it yet. But it's about women's role within medieval society and also how that portrays, I think, to like modern day. It sounds so interesting. It sounds so interesting. It sounds like my kind of nonfiction, but alas. <laughs> then... I only wrote Vera Wong's Unsolicited. Is it advice for murderers? I read Vera Wong's. I really enjoyed Vera Wong's. I really enjoyed it. It's such a fun, cozy mystery with a found family. I really had a fun time reading Vera Wong's. Oh my God, proud of myself. Then we have Death of a Bookseller. This oh, really? is, I think, kind of like a thriller. Okay, I haven't read Death of a Bookseller, but I think it's gonna be my February book club pick for my Patreon. Little teaser, I haven't confirmed then. The vote hasn't closed yet when I'm filming this, but it's pretty clear it's gonna win, <laughs> I think. So I will be reading that in February slash March. So listen, I'll be reading it soon. There's a few of these I'll be ticking off soon, but yeah, Death of a Bookseller I'll be reading soon. We also have The Golden Spoon, which all I'm gonna tell you, thank God, I have read The Golden Spoon. Finally. Some good fucking food. It was a little bit disappointing. This is the Great British Bake Off meets Murder Mystery, which are two things I love. So really, I should have loved this. It was okay. The writing wasn't great. The writing wasn't great and there wasn't much to it. I really find with a lot of like, particularly debut murder mysteries, there's not enough to it. There's not enough scenes. There's not enough moments. There's not enough clues. There's not enough, like they spend too long on like people chatting or whatever. Like I need my mystery. I need murder mysteries to have a pace to it, right? Look at Richard Osman's books. They have such a pace to them with so many things happening. I, I felt like this with a few new release murder mystery debuts where it feels like there's three scenes and I'm like what are we doing here <laughs> finally on I guess a similar note we have Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood Ali Hazelwood is my favorite romance author I haven't read Love Theoretically that one hurts that one hurts no 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 there's no way no I should have read that maybe as my first book of the year regrets we all have them <laughs> right that's it that's it, right? I read seven of them. Oh my God. <laughs> I told you guys it was gonna be bad, but I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. <laughs> I don't wanna talk about it. Seven books? My hair's all messed up from my, from my <laughs> headphones. Seven, 
I read seven. I read seven. I read seven books off of my 24 books in 2024. That was bad. That was bad. But again, I don't place the blame with me. Well, some of the blame comes with me, right? But like the blame goes to Megan making the list. Right? I think I've made an absolutely fire list for my 24 books in 2024. I'm gonna read all those books, right? A delusion. <laughs> Cut back to me <laughs> reacting to that in December. Considering I haven't read any of them yet, but I've only read like three books. I've had a terrible start to my reading year. Absolutely dire, dire, disgusting. This was just a bad list. I think, I, I don't think I selected well. I think making making the, the this amount of books I need to read before I turn this age video is harder than the start of the year because I think at the start of the year I have a clearer idea on like reading goals, books that are coming out I want to read, like my video plans but I think this this list I often struggle with making more so we'll see what I do when I make my next one of these in like April, May time. But last, tell me which of the books I have not read yet I should read soon. Please let me know which ones you've enjoyed because that will help me prioritise which ones to get to but Listen, I could have not made this video. I could not have admitted my faults, but I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> we should all applaud me for that. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon in another one.